Anyways, hey, Ray, you know, we have this these big fights, obviously, this weekend, man. Uh, championship fight at 185 pounds. Before I get your thoughts on how the fight is going to go down, what do you think about the fact that a champion or when you kind of break through and you become a champion, especially when you beat someone like an Israel Adesanya, what does that do for the confidence uh, of that new champion, right? Like when Weidman, I see Weidman in a similar situation when he defeated Anderson Silva for the first time. What does that do to a fighter? Teddy Atlas talks about that 30% improvement when you break through. Do you think that's true? And, and how do you think this plays into Sean Strickland's mentality in this fight? Oh, man, it has to be a huge boost. And then with Weidman, too, let me tell you, after he beat Anderson Silva, you know, at the press conference, he was almost disassociated with everything when he was sitting up there. And they asked him, what about a rematch? He said, yeah, let's do it. Like, he did, he couldn't give a shit about anything. When Weidman was really Weidman, just it was a, it was a different feel, man. It really was. But he sat up there, let's just do the next fight. I don't, he, he, he didn't give a shit who you gave him. And he was going to do it again. And he did do it again. So with that being said, I, I, you know, I think, uh, I think Strickland's a different cat, man. I think he's, I agree. I do agree with Teddy though. You know, whatever the percentage is, you have to, you have to draw energy from a win like that. You know what I mean? But he's going to go, here's the problem, Kenny. He's going to go from a highly, highly technical guy to a guy that's going to try to make this like a, just a complete chaotic mess and i think strickland has the cardio uh it definitely if the other guy gets tired it will be a bad night for him but uh there's a big strong guy who i had no i wasn't given any chance to coming up and then he just started winning fights he just always looked like he was gassing a little bit he had the nasal problem not the most technical guy but some of those guys kenny have bricks in their hands too you know they tap hey, he's got head. a brick for I think he's yeah. got a brick for a head as well. I, like I, he was walking problem. through, he yeah. was walking through those shots against Whitaker. Continue to come forward like a juggernaut. Do you yeah. think he's able to do this against Strickland? Because Strickland's more of a technical striker, right? It, it's it's like uh, the accumulation of blows is what is what yeah. gets you for yeah, the most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think Strickland can put Drickus's lights out based on what you've seen? I think. Well, what I said, I think if Drick is Maybe not at the beginning, but if Drickus gets tired, this guy's yeah. going to. Listen, you got to remember, Strickland's used to sparring 15 rounds in a row. He's not, that's not going to rattle him. But if you watch his sparring, it's all, I never see it with the, the grappling put in. I always see the stand up, and he could do that forever. I got guys in the gym, I think, that are kind of similar that could do that. But it, that's what the way it looks that he's a steady Eddie guy. Uh, but you know, the guy loves to fight, he's, he's really, really good. But the takedown defense will be tested. And if the other guy doesn't have the cardio, like a Marab, to keep going and going and going, he's not winning the fight. But if he can get it done like early and get in there and make it dirty, which I don't even think he tries to do. I just think it's who he is. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the fight, though, man. I really want to see it. I am, too. There's a phrase in sports, you know, ice water in his veins about a fighter or an athlete just – able to rise to any occasion and sort of check pressure in its proper place. And those visuals that I have referenced of Sean Strickland as Israel Adesanya was making that walk in Sydney are embedded upon my brain. I just find it hard to believe that this moment is going to be too big for Sean Strickland. One thing I wanted yeah. to throw your way, if I could. So Duke Rufus, there was a video that was purposed on Instagram this weekend from 20, 25 years ago about Duke Rufus talking about defense and martial arts as self-defense. And he talked about all the great martial artists, right? Wrestlers can't get taken down. Jiu-jitsu guys at the highest level don't get submitted. You know, strikers at the highest level, right? Their defense is great. Floyd Mayweather, you couldn't hit him. I feel like Sean Strickland's defense is sort of an underrated component in the lead up to this fight. I just feel like that tight, high guard and his ability to sort of minimize damage against athletes not named Alex Podeda that just have that otherworldly power and sophistication when it comes to their striking. I feel like Sean Strickland's defense could be absolutely huge in trying to extend Duplessis and minimizing some of the early damage, Raymond. Any thoughts on that? No, 100%. The guy's got great defense. Look, he's got the Philly shell down and he look. He knows himself. He knows what he could do. The, the only problem I see is that there's no way to train for like a Duplessis. You know what I mean? He just looks that awkward to me. I, he real from 
the first time I saw him, I think maybe he's getting a, a little better, but it's the awkwardness, how he deals with that. He's going to, he's not going to go in there and like outbox him from a boxing standpoint. That's not happening, but who knows? He starts getting punched in the elbow, the shoulder, you know, he's getting yeah. clubbed over the head. This is, I got to see how it plays out in like the first couple of minutes. I think we'll get a great idea, but uh, I don't think he's used to what this guy is going to bring, though, which is just, it looks like chaos to me. But I think Strickland walks right through that. I think he's a natural fighter. I, I do think that, you know, winning that title in the manner that he did, man, if that doesn't get him 20 or 30% mentally better, nothing ever will. Uh, so he's got a lot of good things going into this fight, but he's, if he was fighting a more traditional guy, I say I'd go Strickland, you know, hundred percent still Strickland still, you know, I still think we'll win the fight, but it's the awkwardness and the craziness of some of these guys that throws you off, but I, it'll only throw him off for a couple of minutes. I think he'll pick up on it and he'll find the holes in that guy's game pretty quickly and take advantage of it. We are going to get a main event prediction from Ray Longo here before we get him on out of there. But I just want to sort of talk about this fight in terms of fan enthusiasm, right? Because Kenny and Ray, you guys know how excited I get for every singular UFC title fight. But I'd be lying to our audience if I looked into the camera and said I am as excited for Maida Bueno Silva and Raquel Pennington as I am for Sean Strickland and Drake is too much day, right? But I am so excited for this UFC middleweight championship fight. And I yeah. think part of it, even though I put Izzy on a pedestal, is that, Kenny, this is the first middleweight championship fight since 2017. Michael Bisping versus George St. Pierre that doesn't feature the last style bender Israel Adesanya. So I think part of the overwhelming excitement from the fan base for this main event at UFC 297 is that it just feels new and fresh. Whereas we've had a, you know, we have had some middleweight title stinkers out of Sonia Cannonier comes to mind. Right. But this matchup, Kemflo just feels bulletproof as far as your entertainment value. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Both guys are just extremely aggressive. You have a new champion here. We're not quite sure how he's going to look against this very unique style uh, from DDP. You know, I, I think there's a lot of different ways that this fight can go as well. I mean, uh, I, I was a little bit late uh, starting the show just because I was looking at, I was doing my tape study and I'm still like, gosh, what the hell is going to happen here? Um, so uh, yet to make my pick, but yeah, I, I think it's a fascinating fight for all of those reasons, man. We have new blood in that division. Um, and these are Two aggressive fighters who love to move forward, who do take different approaches as well. Um, and I think it's going to be a fascinating fight while it lasts. 